welcome to another edition of the NBA Outlet Preview Series presented by OTGBasketball.com. Follow OTG on Twitter at OTG Basketball. I'm your host, Nick Fay. With me today, Harris Fashard. What's up, Harris? What's up, Nick? Excited to continue our preview series. Again, appreciate all the support and all the fans out there that are listening. And our writers came up with this list of 30 teams, and we're getting closer and closer to the upper echelon. So just excited to talk about our 15th ranked team today, the Charlotte Hornets. Yeah, Hornets coming in at number 15. Uh, it's tough to see what to expect out of the Hornets. Last year, I think they surprised a lot of people. They surprised me, but they did lose a lot of players. So I think, but they are going to get uh, Michael Kidd Gilchrist back. So it'll be interesting to see how they balance that out. But I think 15 is pretty fair for this team. Yeah, the most win since 2000 for the Hornets. An exciting year. They did lose in seven to the Heat in the first round. But a, a lot of exciting moments for this franchise. And, you know, the departure of Lynn, now he's in Brooklyn. But Kemba Walker has developed into a very nice NBA player, and he'll continue to get better. He's really exciting to watch with the basketball. He knows how to get his teammates involved. Batum gives them great minutes. Like you talked about, Gilchrist uh, will come back and help them a little bit. But I think they'll lose a little bit. And Kemba said it best. When Lynn came off the bench, there was a certain spark and energy that he created that they will miss. And I think the 48 number is going to go south a little bit because of that. And like I said, very fun team to watch last year, a lot of energy. But Lynn now transferring that over to Brooklyn, I think that affects them a little bit. And I think just the fact that everybody in these got better, and I'm not sure they did, Nick. Yeah, I mean, they did lose some players off the bench. We'll talk about that in a little bit. I felt like last season, if they're going to do anything, it was going to they're going to beat the Heat in that matchup which they should have won, but they didn't come through in Game 7. I think they had a chance in Game 6 as well. But uh, a tough season for them. And like you said, everyone in the East is getting better. The only thing they did is get MKG back. So Right, and, and there are some additions we'll speak about. And I wanted to touch on Bellinelli and, and Roy Hibbert a little bit. And Kaminsky might be better year two. Uh, I, there's there's some guys I think that that might make some noise. This could still be a playoff team if all things uh, work out for them. But we'll see as we as we start talking about their addition subtractions, how we how we think guys are going to fit in here. Yeah, I think this is a playoff team. But like you said, let's start with these as additions. They made a trade on draft night. I think they traded like a late first round pick for Marco Bellinelli. They signed Roy Hibbert. They picked up Brian Roberts and Ramon Sessions, two guys who've been in that, with that organization before. And uh, they signed up Christian Wood, I think, to a camp contract. So, you know, they really didn't fill the holes they lost, but they did add some pretty decent guys for the bench. Yeah, Perry Ellis got undrafted, and he he might he's on their training camp roster. The kid who play, seemed to play anybody who watches college basketball it seemed like he was at Kansas for our entire lifetime. The six eight forward, so that might be a decent piece. Their draft picks, like you said, um, was see twenty sixteen. They went there's a couple guys undrafted here. It, it's you know, Mike Toby and Rashid Solomon, these guys look like they're just going to be training camp pieces. Not a ton of moves really made for them, bringing back a lot of the same guys, like we just touched on, Bellinelli and Hibbert. But this is a team that I think the ranking is fair, but with the additions, uh, the subtraction to me outweigh the additions because Lynn was a very important piece to offset and take pressure off their best player, who is Kemba Walker. Without Kemba, this thing doesn't go. The exciting 6-1 guard out of Connecticut, had that really exciting run a few years ago in the Big East tournament, and now he's kind of finding his niche as a lottery pick from 2011. He's really started to take off, and now when we talk about guys that have to step up, I'm not going to talk about Kemba because he did step up last year. He took his game from about the 17 point a game to the 20. He took that next step. He shot 42% from the field, 37 from three. And he shot 85, got to the line five times a game. So he's already taken that next step to be an all-star caliber player, also playing in 81 games last year. Yeah, and like you said, it'll be interesting to see if he can repeat that without Lynn because Lynn took a lot of pressure off him offensively and defensively. I think Steve Clifford even said they're going to miss Lynn a lot. But they didn't just lose Lynn. They lost Courtney Lee, who was a midseason pickup for them. I think they made a trade for him. And, you know, Courtney Lee was a solid pickup as well. They picked him up midseason. He gives them some nice D at that two spot. You know, Al Jefferson was all banged up last season, but he still he gave him solid minutes off the bench, solid scoring. It's going to be tough to replace all these guys, especially with the people they added. Right, and I think you see Walker's minutes at 35. That'll, that'll spike a little bit. If they're going to go, 
to where they need to go, his minutes will probably go up to about 38. And he'll be one of the highest, 36, 37, 38. You know, remember, and it's a tough comparison to make because nobody is Michael Jordan or LeBron and those guys. But in their prime of their careers, those guys played 40 minutes a game. If the Hornets want to go to where they need to go, Kemba might have to be a 23, 24-point-a-game guy, and he might have to just take on the load of being an all-star caliber player. Was he an all? He was not an all-star last year, I do not believe. Yeah, so. he was not an all-star. I mean, some people, you know, made the push for him to get those all-star votes. Yeah. He was right around the area. He's pretty close. You know, he'll be an all-star this year, though. I think so. Uh, it's it's tough. You know, it's just tough with all the the players out there to pick. You know, who you well, think is going to be? Yeah, he's just going to be so important to his team. That I, 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 I listen. Is it a borderline? Is Kemba Walker like a, a guaranteed all-star? No, no, he's not. But I think if you look around the guards in the Eastern Conference, you know, Kyrie is certainly not as. Well, you can make the argument Kyrie is as important to his team, but outside of Kyrie. John Wall and Kyle Lowry, those are the three best point guards in the East, if I'm not mistaken. If you if you look outside those three guys, it has to be Kemba next. Yeah, I, it has to be. It has to be Kemba. I mean, you could tell me who the other point guards in the in the Eastern Conference are. You know, you have the Hawks, Pacers, Heat, Cavs. You know, we talked about Kyrie. Talked about Wall. Talked about Isaiah Thomas, maybe, who was an all-star last year. Yeah, I would probably go with Isaiah Thomas, maybe. But the thing is, like, you you already said three guards, so three point guards, and then there's the shooting guard, too. So, I mean, it, it's pretty he's tough. Gonna right? have to be, no, he's going to have to be special. I said, if this team's going to have – if this team's going to be able to win, he's going to have to be special. Yeah, no, if this team, you know, does keep up at the same pace they did last year, it'll be a lot because of Kemba. But also, I think other – talking about guys that need to step up, Nicholas Batum, he just needs to stay healthy. I think he was a great pickup for them last season, and they did a smart thing re-signing him. Um, getting Michael Kidd Gil Chris back, you know, he he gives him another element. You know, he gives him that defensive player, his offense. You know, it will look good in the games he played last year, but that was only, I think, two or three games before he re-injured himself. So I'm looking forward to see what he can do. You know, there's always been so much hype about him, and his defense definitely makes an impact, so – yeah, but no. Batum is an all-around very solid player. I'm not necessarily, I think, as high as him on most people are because of his low shooting percentage at 42 and 34 from three. But he's also a bigger guy. He does, He's not like a finesse offensive player. He's more of like an all-around do-it-all type of guy, which is what they need. But for people to tell me that Batum is their best or most valuable player is just not true. I think that's Kemba, in my opinion. But the combination of him and Kemba... And I think Kaminsky's actually going to have to play a role this year. Yeah. Uh, just talking about Batum real quick. I, I think he's a great all-around player. Yeah. He's, I think he's pretty close to being the most impactful player on that team just because he offers playmaking from that small forward position. Right. He brings some really good defense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Like you said, his shooting percentages aren't great. He needs to get more consistent as a shooter. But he randomly will just have these games where he gets so hot. Yeah. So, but like, talking about the bigs, I think Kaminsky needs to step up. Zeller needs to step up, you know. They their big play hasn't been like above average. It hasn't been great. It's been pretty good. It's been consistent. But if they want to make some noise and get back to the playoffs, they're going to need one of these young bigs to play a big. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this, this is the thing about uh, this is the thing about their bigs. They lost Jefferson, right? Yeah, he's been pretty much their most consistent one for the last few years, other than injuries. Right, so they lost Jefferson and Kaminsky, as my boy Michael Rapport, shout out to the Rapport, the Rap Pack, the Rapport guy. He would see yep. how Patrick Ewing was like keeping shot charts for Kaminsky and like joking about it. But Kaminsky actually has a little potential. Like it, it's scary. Like people at in college, like kind of slept on him, but he could shoot it. He could stretch the floor. Like in today's NBA, Kaminsky could be like a fifteen point a game guy. Yeah, no, he definitely has some potential. Yeah, I think. He took a little bit more time than people expect to adjust the NBA game. But, you know, going to the season, he has more experience. He had some nice moments in the playoffs. It's all about getting consistent for him. You know, not just showing flashes here or there. It's about, you know, being a consistent good player for the full game and all season long. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and listen, I think as far as the who the ball is going to be in the hands towards the end of the game, I think they call him Cardiac Kemba for a reason. But there are other guys that are going to have to step up and now if we talk about the step up, I think it's going to be Kaminsky because they need a third guy. Like, they need a third guy. Lim was their guy last year. You look at their scoring. But if it's going to be Kemba at 22-23 
and it's going to be Batum at 15 or 16, Gilchrist will chip in, but Kaminsky's got to go over 10, 12 points a game, I think. Yeah, they need someone to step up that center spot. You know, they'll probably roll. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what they go with the starting lineup, to be honest. I'm not really sure. I know, obviously, they'll start Kemba, Nicholas Batum. They'll probably uh, start Marvin Williams. They started him at the four last year. But I don't know if they'll start um, MKG because, you know, I don't know if you want to put him with Batum. You're kind of missing out some shooting. But that center spot, it easily could go to Kaminsky um, or or probably, do you think Roy Hibbert could contend for that? Yeah, or, I think so too, yeah. So is this team going to be better or worse this season? I'm going to say they're going to be a little bit worse. Not a lot. You know, a few, probably a few wins. They'll probably still make the playoffs. But feels like I a think, 500 team. Yeah, I feel like they're, they're going to miss the guys they lost. You know, Lynn, Lee, Jefferson, those guys had an impact on this team. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. I, this is one that I it's hard to disagree with you here. I would put them if – you know how I like to put the numbers. I would have to say 42 and 40, I want to say. And, mm -hmm. and I would probably have them competing for the eighth or ninth spot instead of what they were last year, a six. So they'll be in the contention and battle for that eighth seed all year long. And yeah, if Kemba could go into another level, then maybe they make that push back up to where they were last year. But I think a lot depends on if he takes the step. And Clyde Frazier, us Nick, the Nick fans know that he talks about being on the threshold. I think he's on the threshold, Kemba. I think he's that close to turning the corner and becoming one of the elite guards in this league because the tools are there. It's, it's just his mind there, and the tools are there to become an elite guard in this league. Yeah, and this is a big year, you know, see what he can do after having the season he did last year, if he can build on that and kind of keep that success going. But final prediction for the Hornets? Uh, eighth seed. I think they're going to be the eighth seed in the Eastern Conference, and I think the Cavs will take care of them in the first round. Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll agree with that. I don't think they can get much higher than the seventh seed. The eighth seed yes. sounds about right and probably a Cavs sweep in the first or round. Or if they do avoid the Cavs, which is going to be important, maybe they could – Whoever that two seed is is going to get a battle and always does. The Pacers almost beat that two seed last year in the Raptors. So whoever gets avoids the Cavs in the first round, whoever that one or two seed is, whoever avoids that could potentially pull the upset. So if you get into that seven, maybe they could pull the upset. Your probability of pulling an upset just went up substantially when yeah. you avoid the Cavs. Yeah, one oh the cat LeBron in the first round has never lost. Yeah, so just mark yeah, like, that up. Like, legitimately, if you are playing LeBron in the first round, go home. Like I'm like, it's not even to be worth discussing. Like, you're going home. They, LeBron beat Jordan's Hornets a couple years ago with the Heat in the first round, and as he was going down the court on a dunk, he gave Mike a little stare down to say, listen, I might be the greatest. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I think but, uh, that was in, what, 20 – that was in 2014, I think. No, 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 I'm sorry, because he was with the – yep. Yep, that was in 2014. LeBron's last year with the Heat. <sighs> but uh, let's move on to League Pass. You going to watch the Hornets this year? Yeah, I like Kemba Walker. I do. Uh, he's one of my favorite players in the league, so I'll tune in. Uh, as you can tell, I'm, I'm high on him. He's a, he's a New York guy, and uh, I've actually seen him in New Paltz before. He knows, like, some of the Marist guys, so I've seen him walking around in New Paltz before. So he, he's a really cool down-to-earth dude, man, and he's a competitor. He's won some big games in college. He's, he, he's definitely not afraid of the big moment, and so I'll tune in for him. And, and and I'll watch like they're they're not a really exciting team, but I said I think he might be on the threshold of turning that corner. So I'll, I'll tune into some of the games. I'm not in love with their roster, but I'll, I'll tune in because of him. Yeah, um, I probably won't watch as much as you. I like Kemba Walker, but I'll just check out these games for FanDuel purposes. Mm. Not a huge fan of the style they play. Yeah. I mean, it's good good basketball. Just you know, it's not that fun to watch. Yeah, I agree with that. With not being that fun, but. But uh, on to our final segment, the truth, our emoji today for the Hornets. What is it, Harris? Uh, we're going to do the upside-down face. They're, they kind of got their fa their franchise turned around a little bit, and I think that face, that that signifies the the the, re the reboot almost, like the, the turnaround type of thing. And it's like, eh, you know, the emotion is eh. I think when you think – when someone says, yo, let's go to the Hornets-Knicks game or the Hornets-Nets game, you're like, yeah, you know, I got – I got to go to dinner with my girlfriend tonight. Like, you're just – you're not excited to see them play. The only reason why I said and, – and the national, you know how I talk about the national TV stuff. You know, they have a couple games on ESPN, but not more than eight or nine nationally televised games that usually tells you the story. 
So I think that that's a really good one for them. And I, I'm only tuning in specifically to watch Kemba because you know I like to watch the guards and pick up things from the guards. But it's not an exciting team to watch. Yeah, it's – well, one thing you'll watch is, you know, when it's down to the last 20 seconds, they're getting Kemba the ball so he can go for the win. He comes through his, comes through in those situations, so that's always fun to watch. Yeah, but, I'm a big, big fan of his, yeah. But uh, that wraps it up for the Hornets. Thanks, everybody, for listening, and on to the next one. Yeah, guys, we'll see you for Team 14. Excited about it. And, and again, thank, to, thank you to all the fans of the OTG podcast and the outlet. And, and follow us on Twitter at OTG Basketball. A lot of great things happening. So excited to continue this series, guys. Have a good one.